thriller ends with a wedding end of scene, right? You know, it's like the congressman and he's got all these like charges against him and all these allegations and he's running from the law and da, 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 and then he gets married. Yay, it's like a rom-com, really. Yeah. Uh, and nobody has any more questions. You know, the judges are like, well, <laughs> we can't pursue this case. He's in love. Oh, he's a young couple. You know, ah, uh, and, and then it's like that moment, and the music swells, and he's like, "Other, oh, I would, I would prosecute this uh, child sex trafficking mm-hmm. case." But yeah, feeling in a good mood today. It's like you could either be you enjoy strange. your honeymoon. Da 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 da. Okay, I'm sorry. I doubt it. I doubt <laughs> it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think the way the movie should have ended is he's got the wedding, and then a few cop cars pull up. They're storming out. They've got the papers. And his buddy has Slow left mo. incriminating information in the comment section of a Venmo transaction. Um, I might have watched a movie last year. But anyway, um, so some people, I think the main question that people have coming from this is, wait a second, spousal privilege. Does this mean that she will no longer be able to be um, sort of obligated to testify against him. Now, I am very much not a lawyer. We have on uh, Adrienne Lawrence very often because she is supposedly spousal privilege does not protect you for, communi- for from having to divulge communications that took place before you were married. So I, who knows if that was even a consideration for them. I'm assuming it was not, but it's that like is not prenum. gonna help. It's like a prenum and an NDA in one. Yeah, it's anything not. I told you before, <laughs> that's lies. You yeah, can't use that against those me. crimes. Nope, just the vows, not the crimes. That's not how it works, actually. Um, I assume it's. Oh, I, I have a few potential explanations. One, it's to give people the idea that things are going well. He doesn't want the party to turn on him. That sort of thing. The other is just he's a very self-involved quasi sociopath that got married. I think that's possible. He doesn't take seriously anything that's going on, you know, like the well being of uh, girls. He doesn't care about that. He doesn't care about charges potentially coming out against him. He doesn't care about anything. That's a potential explanation as well. You know, she's 26, which arguably is, you know, 10 years uh, above his normal median girlfriend age. Um, but when I saw it, I was like, first of all, Miss Miss Lucky is not lucky, uh, and secondly, she's she's very rich. She's young enough, is she? Her her father is like a billionaire. Oh God, I just feel yeah. here. That's what's sad to me. Rich I'm like, I'm like, well, at least you married for money, and then you realize that she's personally rich, and I'm like, run, bitch, run, like. Why are you doing this? You don't need him. You've got to, you could attract someone far better looking who isn't a creep. My God, why? Um, and, you know, maybe she, he's blackmailing her. We never know. No, I, th- let's not. <laughs> the other thing he did, the other thing he did is they were on the plane together and he, t- he posted a photo of her sleeping next to him, her mouth like wide open, clearly like a non consensual post. And I'm like, yep, that is on brand douchebag. That is absolutely um, what you'd expect. And, you know, a lifetime of Matt Gates. That's its own sentence. I yeah. wouldn't wish Look- that on my worst enemy. I, I will I will I will close by saying it is difficult to judge a relationship from the outside, but I, I'm gonna try. And I Do think it. I think that he deserves it anyway. Um no, it's he's he's a terrible guy who whether this is the scandal that takes him down or not, he will be taken down because he is nothing but hair gel, ignorance, entitlement, and that's it. Like he's going he he thinks everything is his. And he's too stupid to make it work. So he will inevitably be taken down by one of these things. Maybe it's to it's to credit that she trusts in love or whatever. I don't know. The story fundamentally is not about her. It's about this congressman eventually inevitably going down for as many crimes. Anyway, um, we only have a minute, Francesca. I will close by saying uh, Chris sent in a super chat suggesting Larry the cobble guy. Kind of good. Like that. Anyway, um, anyway, like Larry the Cable Guy is very popular amongst conservatives, yeah, yeah, but in this yeah. case, it's not cable, cobble, like the city that fell to the Taliban. Oh, the cobble.
cobble. Yes. Oh, amazing. Yeah. That was sorry. Anyway. That was good. I was like cobblestone. <laughs> what are we doing? Cob- what? Okay, my bad. <laughs> Tough crowd. Oof. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had suspenders I could pull. Um, okay, so uh, Francesca, <laughs> thank you as always thank you. for joining us. I know that you're about to go and do Indisputable with Dr. Rashad Ritchie, so that's very exciting. And then we'll be talking, you're gonna be talking for the rest of your natural life, uh, but we appreciate you being here for Fantastic Mondays. Thanks so much, John. Everyone go check out the Bituation Room uh, and then go check out Indisputable and you'll see more Francesca. Uh, but for now, stay safe out there, stay sane out there, I'll see you soon. Welcome to Indisputable, good to be with you. We got a lot on the agenda 
today. Ladies and gentlemen, a full show breaking down news of the day with me is my home girl Francesca, host of the Bituation Room. I only say that one time during the show, by the way, so mm-hmm. I will not be saying it again. All right. Also, during the bullpen, my debate segment, we have Aaron. Um, wife, National Director of Freedom Foundation, um, anti-mask, anti-vax individual, should be loads of fun, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, my top story for today, a white woman who tried to kill kids with her Jeep because of their ethnicity has now received 25 years in federal prison. Let me give you some background, um, this happened in Iowa. Um, The woman tried to kill two kids with her Jeep because of their race. She's been sentenced in federal prison. She was already sentenced in state prison. Her name is Nicole Poole Franklin. Let's put up a picture of this monster. There she is. She already was uh, um, sentenced for attempted murder on the state level, was convicted now of two federal hate crimes. Um, Let me give you how this unfolded. A white woman who said she did try to kill two children by running over them with her SUV because of their race was sentenced on Thursday to 25 years in federal prison on two hate crime charges. Nicole Poole Franklin, 43 of Damone, Iowa had already been sentenced to 25 years on two counts of attempted murder at the state level. Um, Franklin will serve the federal sentence concurrently with the state sentence, which means she will spend more time behind bars, just a little more time behind bars, according to Richard D. Westfall, who was the acting US attorney for the Southern District of Iowa. All right, that's according to the New York Times. Um, we got another picture. Let's put up another picture of this would be killer, okay? Franklin's first attempt at murder began around 3.30 p.m. on December 9th in 2019. That's when she drove her Jeep Grand Cherokee by kids she assumed were Middle Eastern, African or Mexican. The time notes, the times notes. Franklin jumped the curb and hit one of the kids who was a 12 year old black boy. His injuries included pain, cuts, bruising and swelling. She wasn't done ladies and gentlemen, an hour later in the city of Clive, Franklin saw a 14 year old girl walking on the sidewalk who she believed was Mexican. Again. She jumped the curb and hit the girl. The child suffered pain, cuts, bruising, swelling, and a concussion. One of the victims said in court, and I quote, I'm sorry my skin color bothered you. But me and my people are never leaving. Osman Sanford. The father of the injured boy in this case said his son became aggressive and angry after the attack. I know it's going to affect his life, so I'm just trying to help him, he said according to the newspaper. These children will be psychologically traumatized and will have to seek remedy for that in order to have a normative life because of this would be killer um, who now has 25 years in federal prison running concurrent with the state conviction. Uh, Francesca, what are your thoughts here? I mean, it's it's incredible actually that she was sentenced, right? I mean, that's number one, you're like, oh. Oh, okay, hate crime sentence, usually not this strong, right? Usually pretty light, even when you know it's someone attempting murder. So I think this is good. It's but it's insane, right? And you realize, you know, the poison that is racism, right? The mental illness that is racism, and that it 
that we that you know Fox News, that Trump, that MAGA folks, that all kinds of grifters have been putting that poison into these wells of these folks to the point where they're straight up using ISIS tactics now, you know, running cars into places. Now, here's the question for me, you know, Nicole Franklin, is she going to be a heroine of the right? Maybe. Mm. Who knows? Maybe they'll help her. You know, like the difference is that she went after children just sort of on the sidewalk. They weren't participating in a Black Lives Matter march, but if they were, mm. she might be a hero. Because yeah. we know that Black Lives Matter marches have also been targeted by people in their cars. It's just sickening. Yeah. And to, to add irony to that, literally, you have governors like DeSantis in Florida who championed a law to create a level of immunity for anyone. Who runs over a protester with a vehicle? And this was signed on the day of the verdict of of Chauvin, who killed George Floyd, letting you know exactly why he was doing it. Okay, let me shift stories. Um, you know, we talk about Karens on this show, but I have found an anti-Karen, <laughs> and this anti-Karen decided to get out of a car and record an interaction with the police officer. Uh, and a black suspect, something that I recommend everyone to do, by the way. So she got out of her car, she started recording, not bothering the cops, not interfering with the investigation. And she ended up being penalized for this. Um, here's the video. How you doing? How you doing? Do you have your ID now? Nope. You don't, why not? You're driving a motor vehicle. I know what I'm doing. Okay. I got it. Okay. I got it too. You're parked illegally right now. Honey, you want to pull up the car, please? Will you pull up the car, please? Okay, I can write you a citation now. I can write that. Huh? I'll take that, no problem. Okay, I need your ID to write that. Okay. All right. And what's that citation for? Parking illegally. Did you see how it was just moved? Huh? Did you see how it was just moved and had the little lights on, flashers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you were right there in the It wasn't the even intersect. parked. There was someone sitting right, right in the car. I have it right I have it on my too. Okay. That's good for you. You need a driver's license and registration and all that. Here's my driver's license, my VA card. Okay, let me explain something to you real quick, okay? Illegal to stop in the middle of the road. If you want to, huh? yeah, mm -hmm. you stop and then you block traffic trying to talk, okay? You're interrupting our investigation, okay? I just asked him a simple yes or no question. Okay, he didn't want to talk to you. You see that? He did say yes or no. He did say yes. Okay. So secondly, then you pull that. over here and you park right. in the middle of the road. I pulled okay. over to the side, right by that pole right there, with my flashers on. Well, I have that on video too. Okay, I'm glad you do. Okay. Okay. Now. Since you're a veteran, I'm not going to write you a ticket. That's fine. Well, I appreciate that. All right, you have a wonderful night. You too. This is why people don't like the popo. Okay, this was petty as hell. He was trying to block her from recording something she is legally able to do, and then utilizing the threat of criminal charges in order to stop her from doing what she is legally able to do. Now, here's some background to this. According to the narrative, she pulled up on this situation and she asked the young black male, hey, do you need some help? All right, he indicated yes, okay? Later, he actually thanked her for getting involved, all right? I encourage everyone. If you see something, record something. You know how they say, see something, say something. If you see something, record something. Anytime there's an interaction with the police and I'm around, everyone who knows me personally, they know we are about to stop whatever vehicle we're in. I don't care if you're driving, I'm driving. And we're going to record until the situation is over. That's what we do. This young lady is an Air Force veteran. Based on what we could gather, this happened in North Braddock, Pennsylvania. The woman recording, her name is Leanne Sedlock Alley. The officer is Sergeant Butler. I'll put his picture up again. Let's get his picture up there. Sergeant Butler. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Protecting and serving. In a comment, Leanne Sedlock Alley explained that when she was stopped at the stop sign, she saw that man looked scared, 
She rolled down her window and asked if he needed her to pull over and help. What an ally. Commenters noticed that the officer shown in the video was covering his badge and found it suspicious that three officers were dealing with the man in question. On a pleasant note, the young man actually commented on the TikTok saying, that's me. Like, oh my God, I remember this. We need more individuals like her who are willing to do that. Francesca, what came to your mind when you saw this? Yeah, I mean, I'm one question I have obviously is, is she a white woman? And I, I think the answer is yes. Um, and I will just say that, look, white privilege exists and you can use it to your advantage. Right, that you can use it to actually be that ally to record and and also her attitude towards the police and their attitude towards her showed me that she probably did have a lot of privilege and she was, you know, kind of used it like, nope, I'm with my right. She kept on talking back, talk back, talk back, talk back, talk back, you know. And you could only imagine if, you know, she had been somebody else, yep. how she might have been treated, right? But that talk back, that talk, that pushback, right? And good for her for staying there and watching. And we under we know, you know, groups like Cop Watch who've been doing this for decades, you know, they're often on the receiving end of a lot of that police violence. Mm -hmm. So you can use your privilege for good just because it exists. It's like know it exists and use it for good. And yeah, if someone looks like they need help, at least get it on tape, right? At yep. least be there. Um, as we know, with you know the murder of George Floyd, um, and and how that was on tape. And now I'm forgetting the brave young woman's name who got it all on tape. Um, but it can change. It can make a difference. Yeah, and um, the young lady's name. Is Leanne Sedlock Alley, an Air Force veteran. Big ups to her for doing what she did. Um, here's another story, uh, did not work out quite as well. Um, a white woman slaps a black man and gets her man a class one ass whooping. That's what happened at this Steelers game. Um, it was a preseason game. Let me just go to the video. We have not been able to independently identify or confirm the identity of those who have been involved. But let's be very clear about what happened here. Um, you have a white female who slapped a black male. They were in a verbal disagreement. That happens, it's part of life. She decided to assault this individual. She got violent, she committed an act of criminality. It was physical assault. Uh, he did not do what he could have done to her. He did physically remove her from him, but when her man stood up, her man, dare I say, caught them hands. And literally, when you're on the top, you have a, ta a tactical advantage. Now, when the black male got the best of the white male who decided to intervene, when that happened, there were some telling the black male he needed to go, that somehow he was wrong. And then you can hear others saying, no, 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 she slapped him. Mm -hmm. She started it first, she hit him, she assaulted him. Now here's what I find interesting about this whole thing, okay? Right now on social media, you will find mixed reaction about what happened here. People are saying that he should have just let it go. Uh, that he never should have got physical. And let me also say this to the guy um, who got his ass kicked, okay? When, let me be 100, <laughs> let me just keep it all the way real. When you decided not to intervene while your significant other got in the face of another person, 
Well, you decided to sit there and do absolutely nothing. You already knew if she did something, you would be called upon, okay? You would have to defend her if she did something and you lost the fight here, okay? Um, it's a tragedy, I do not condone violence. I don't like what I see, but there's only one victim here and that's the black male. He's the only victim in this situation, period. Um, Francesca, what are your thoughts? I mean, I feel like the Steelers clearly were not doing well because uh, <laughs> folks were <laughs> antsy. They were, uh, you know, ready to pounce uh, on both sides. You know, I mean, look, whoever started the fight, it, it, I'm curious as to what happened and why it even gets to that point and why you feel the right to just like get up in somebody's face and start yelling at them. Just like that level of disrespect already just shows just how many people are, again, I mean, all joking aside, just are on edge right now, right? And there's not enough folks who can de-escalate. But yeah, if you slap someone in the face, you're probably, you know, not necessarily going to get punched, but there's going to be ramifications. So like, that's what's going to happen. And I love how legally, Dr. Richie, you explain all of that, but you're basically like, <laughs> don't mess with the bull if you don't want to get your ass whooped, kind of thing. Like I love yeah. that you're kind of basically and making. But yeah. Listen, and I can make a moral argument because his aggression went toward the guy sure. rather than the woman because he, you know, he felt he was. That's not a physical issue for him, right? But he was physically assaulted. But when the man got up, I think that was more of a physical issue for him, and you can see his aggression went directly toward the man who was involved in that brawl, mm -hmm. and literally. The woman got back involved and kind of saved the boyfriend <laughs> um, because she got in between them. And, and literally, that's kind of what de escalated some of it. Really ironic, but he was the victim. All right. Okay. Uh, we got more on the other side. It's indisputable. Stick and stay. I'll predict right here for you, Chris. I think Donald Trump will leave office before his term is up. He'll be humiliated, embarrassed, and I know him. He's not going to want to lose, and he's going to run you for the You got hills. that bet all day long. Okay, let's get after it. Now, um, so look, Jake has made some good <laughs> predictions, and you know, this is most this is in good fun. I could not disagree more. There's um, a little bromance between the two of them. You got that bet all day <laughs> long, Janky. You. <laughs> oh, you know you stop. In the meantime, <laughs> let's call him out on the day. No, no, but I. I just got a Roku set. Did uh, basically a little bit of channel surfing, and I was like, "There we are! Yeah, there we are!" And then I turned it on, and it was John and Brett on Damage Report making fun of me. Oh no. <laughs> So you are so busted. I even took a picture of it, okay? They're talking about my predictions. I got a new prediction for you, John Idola. You're doing a show that's blowing the doors off everybody. Young Turks is the largest online news network, not a big deal. We're gonna rock the boat. We're gonna be counter establishment. We're gonna tell people the truth to the best of our abilities. We're so sick of this corruption. We're not the robots on TV. I actually care about the news. Guilty, guilty, I care. Fourth day on Occupy Wall Street. Last night we launched Wolf Pack. It's us pushing our ideas out there, trying to help the country in every way that we can, trying to make this place just a little bit better. Reporting from the Hillary Bernie debate, I gotta be honest, you know what we do? We cover it for real. For us, this system isn't working. Free, free, free. and fair. And fair. Election. And when he told the cops that day, when they came to drag her away, and he said, if you're gonna chain her, you're gonna chain me. If you're gonna arrest her, you're gonna arrest me.
Hi, I'm Bartholomew Joseph Kyle. I do audio for the main show, The Young Turks. I also do audio for Post Game. I started in 2006. I met Cenk Uger at the Iraq for Sale screening that was directed by uh, Robert Greenwald. And watching that, I want to figure out a way to be part of something that's genuine and authentic. Welcome back. All right, we got a lot of comments, let's get to it. And thank you all for always engaging with the program. Um, let's go to TYT member, this is funny. Uh, Jamba Gino, uh, Karen bingo card for the TYT community. Do we have that? Let's put up the, let's put it up. Uh, this could be quite fun actually. <laughs> I like that, That I mean that, that would be a really fun game. All right, very creative, thank no you. No shoes and hungry Karen are my favorite. Yeah. Hungry Karen. You know what I like? I like called a Karen. That's becoming more and more a thing. Like they're being called a Karen in the moment of Karenicity. Yeah. Okay. Elected, uh, electic miscellaneous says, we need more people like that woman to stand up to the police. We need a good name for an anti Karen. What about a Rashad? In honor of the host who does the best job exposing Karens day in and day out, I would be highly honored to be your anti Karen. Uh, Cena Hogoboom, I'm drunk, a double shot of Fran. That's right, <laughs> that's right. Initially uh, I was like, wow, that's a big admission on a Monday morning, Woo, good for <laughs> you. And then I was like, "Oh, me, thanks, cool. <laughs> uh, sometimes people just let you know, say, hey, listen, I'm high. <laughs> no, I know, I know. Good for you. <laughs> uh, YouTube Super Chat, Vicky Gray says, I lost it. All right, Vicky Gray says, fantastic Fran with the good doctor, great Monday. It is a great Monday. Week is off to a good start. Charles Lee Joseph Massey the third. I bet she won't slap anybody at the game anymore, and mostly because her man ain't no help at all. I think her man talks more trash than he can back up. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I think she assumed, hey, I got this badass boyfriend over here or husband or whatever he may be. Um, not so much, madam. Not so much. Okay, uh, Forgum Noss, I think I said that right. I'm surprised she got sentenced, then again, she's not a cop. Mark Bugs, AKA MBZ. I need my white people to be like this woman and that one guy at the beach that yelled at the cops. True allies, camera number one hero, I record everything, good for you. Um, and thank you, uh, keep it 100, uh, Forgum Knots, thank you, or Forgum, I don't know. I get it right, somebody let me know. Um, Murit Sadiq Karan Zaki, 1380 AM Atlanta radio. Dr. Richie always delivers the truth and empowering information to his listeners. Thank you so much for that. I do that morning show, Monday through Friday. Thank you for listening. Uh, Pocket Trash Dragon says, it's what us hitchhikers have to do on a daily basis. We start recording everything cops do when they mess with us, good for you. Um, Twitch. Equanimity, 23, equanimity, 23, I think that's right, okay. All right, good for her, I would have lost it at how condescending he was being, okay. Northern Ice Dragon, my daughter has two black best friends. I can't tell you how many times they've been stopped and her asked if she's okay. All right, Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Next story, Donald J. Trump, it has happened ladies and gentlemen. He has been booed by his own people at his own rally. Where did this happen? Alabama, of course, okay? Let me give you some background. Former President Donald Trump um, heard a very unfamiliar sound. During his speech, he (laughs) has been booed during the speech Saturday night in Coleman, Alabama. Uh, the booing was directed at him. Let's go to the video. 
three days less than nine months. And it's great. And you know what? I believe totally in your freedoms. I do. You got to do what you have to do. But I recommend take the vaccines. I did it. It's good. Take the vaccines. But you got, no, that's okay. That's all right. You got your freedoms. But I happen to take the vaccine. They literally started booing the man because he told the truth. Now, I don't know what Trump was thinking. He knows that his crowd, they have been eating lies from him for years. Now that he actually tells the truth about something, what do they do? They show you that they will turn on him. The cult, ladies and gentlemen, has no leader right now. The cult has no leader. They will turn on Donald Trump as quickly as they turned on Mike Pence. That is the reality here. And now Donald Trump feels it. So let me tell you what's going to happen in the future. It's not going to make Donald Trump a better leader. He's not going to become a more transformational leader. He's not going to try to get them to turn their ships to look at things a different way. It's going to make him even more problematic. It's going to make him even more so a reflection of that group. Because in that very speech, when he realized that he was losing the crowd and they were booing him because he actually had the audacity to say something that was true. He then turned it around and started saying, "Oh, but if it's if it doesn't work, if it doesn't work, you will be the first to know. Alabama will be the first to know if it does not work." So he turned his own message in real time, being the con man that he is, in order to win the approval, the applause of that crowd. Let me tell you why men like Donald Trump are dangerous. Mm -hmm. They are dangerous because their value, their worth, who they are is tied into the praise of others. And as long as you need people, you can never lead people. And that's the reality, Donald Trump and that crowd, are the same person. Yeah. Francesca? No, 100%. I mean, look, we've always called him sort of like a, a bad stand up comic. And as a stand up comic, I, you, that's all you do. You live for approval. You want laughs. You want claps. You want people to still be on your side. That's not what a politician should do. That's not what a real leader should do, is just telling people what they want to hear. Also, it's like bad comedy. If I were like, you guys are beautiful, everyone's beautiful, I love you, you can do nothing wrong. You, sir, you're naked in the front row, <laughs> love it. You know, like, you should never tell people those kinds of lies, especially these are lies that are killing them. And so it's funny because I'm like, you know, is it dawning on him that his, you know, crowd turnouts are dwindling? Mm. Or is it dawning on him, look, we know he's in Florida. Florida is being ravaged by Delta. You know, he's not safe. It's like it's affecting everyone. He probably like, you know, the McDonald's that I always go to had an outbreak. <laughs> you know, like that that's probably why he's nervous about this. But it's like, you know, F- Florida is truly getting hit and and so no one is insulated from this. No one is safe from this, but it is very scary, like you said, to see the cult leader be turned on by the cult itself as soon as he says something that is a little bit of out of step with whatever you know the brain worms have been whispering into their ear this entire time and to be honest with you look I actually a little bit of hats off like there's a difference between someone like Trump and someone like Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram or other right wing grifters on Fox News who are openly talking about, you know, sowing dis- disbelief and misinformation about the vaccine every day on their show. Trump is among the people. He's yep. out there. He sees them face to face. They want to touch him. They want to take photos with him. They probably are all carrying a certain amount of COVID of of coronavirus mm-hmm. with them, right? Yep. So like it's easy to just be behind a camera and da 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 da. But then you got to go out to people and see them. It's a different thing. And so he actually backs it up and now he's like, "Hey, everyone should probably get vaccinated anyway." I said this earlier on the damage report on my Fantastic Monday, but look, he's also not campaigning actively, and who knows what kind of, you know, non-truths and random uh, like snake oil lies he's going to be telling as soon as he starts to campaign and coronavirus is still a thing. Yeah, here's what's really interesting, and this is a parallel to Hitler. Okay, 
And I don't give a damn about people saying, "All right, Rashad, I can't believe you're comparing Trump to Hitler. You're damn right I'm comparing him to Hitler. Hitler preached the gospel, preached a rhetoric antithetical to his own being. He preached this dogma of a six foot tall, blonde hair supreme being, the Aryan race. He looked nothing like that, okay? Now you have Donald Trump who wears a mask, but leads anti-mask uh, uh, maskers. Mm -hmm. He took the vaccine, but leads anti-vaxxers. Do you all see the parallel here? It doesn't matter that he is not who he says he is, it doesn't matter. None of that matters to them. What matters is that they're willing to follow the rhetoric, even if it comes from somebody who stands opposite of it in their own personal lives. Now, let me read some stats from Alabama. This is why the event that Donald Trump had is likely a super spreader event. Alabama has been hit hard by the coronavirus with the highly contagious Delta variant, which by the way is basically the DeSantis variant, causing surge in cases. Alabama health officials say 85%. 85% of people hospitalized with COVID-19 are unvaccinated. Yeah. And there has been an increase in the number of children with COVID-19. This week, 50 infected kids have been hospitalized. Also, officials shared their concerns that Trump's rally would be a super spreader event. With Luke Satterfield, an attorney for Coleman, saying beforehand that the city wants to prevent as many non COVID related things as possible so our hospital can use its resources to focus on the pandemic and its variants. We don't want to put any extra strain on them. Well, good luck to that. You're in Alabama, okay? Um, you would damn to get kicked out of a restaurant for wearing a mask in Alabama. Okay, let me shift shift gears here. We got another story. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish a Karen would. You wanna call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You're I feel free, back off. I'm gonna tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. I need you to leave my store. It says it that we have a mask mandate. It's not illegal, is, I need you to leave. Illegal, no, it is not, it's a private company. Okay. I need you to leave. Cool. Sir, I need you to leave and not touch any of my products. Okay. I asked you nicely the first time and then I you start yelling care. me through my glasses on the floor. I need you to leave. Don't, not doing it. I well, need you to I, leave. Go get the security. Sir, I need you to if leave. If it's that much of a deal, you would've got security already. Sir, we did call security, but I need you to leave. Okay, not going to. Well, don't touch any of my products. Sir, I asked you not to touch any of the products. What did I tell you? I need you to leave. I need you to leave. Why are you acting like a child? Why are you acting like a child? Because I asked you to leave my. Why seat. do I have? So why does your store have a policy to wear a mask? Because What's the policy? To wear a mask and a What's store. the policy? To protect For other what? people, sir. From what? I have security right now. From what? From the coronavirus, sir. From the coronavirus. This is a pandemic and, going on. Oh, it is. Since it's I'm full vaccinated. I, so am I, sir. But okay, I'm so a mask. No, you can't actually. It's such There's no I law against it. I don't get it about your. Sign on the door. Sir, keep it cool. Uh, no, I'm not. Because now she's discriminating. I'm not. You are, whether you like it or not. Okay. Sir, he threw the glasses on the floor. He threw my product on the floor and it went on the floor. And that's why I'm asking him to leave because he threw something on the floor and he got up in my face. I feel very unsafe and he needs to leave my store. So I'd like to write a report for the I already got a picture of her, so I'll see you, dumbass. Have a good day, sir. This male Karen is the absolute worst. Uh, let me count the ways of his criminal activity. Destruction of property, criminal trespass and disorderly conduct is what I've seen here. Uh, quite interesting that all of his energy, all of his aggression changed as soon as a man arrived, mm -hmm. okay? He needed a man, cuz he said call security. He needed somebody else to tell him to walk out of the store because he's violating the policy of that private company. Listen, companies, this is based on Every statute and court holding we have. Companies can say no shoes, 
no shirt, no mask, no service. They can say that, they have the right to do that. Okay, there is no ambiguity about that whatsoever. This guy's privilege is oozing his toxic masculinity. I have no problem with masculinity, it's the toxic toxic kind I have a problem with. And this is it front and center. Francesca, what did you see here? Well, first of all, um, this poor woman who clearly must deal with a lot of male Karens because she's in an Oakley store and let's be real, that's kind of part of the outfit yep. uh, is a, just a backwards pair of Oakleys on your fo- on your head. Why are they backwards? Why don't you wear them on your eyes? <laughs> I still don't know why that happens, but yeah. So, and, and of course you named it, look the way, the, the amount of disrespect of course is layered with a crazy amount of sexism, uh, potentially racism, just some just incredible amount of derogatory behavior towards this woman who's asking so so nicely, yeah. who who you know who is who has been patient with him, right? And so the other my favorite part is why are you acting like a child, right? Like right. she says, why are you acting like a child? Why are you acting like a child? Like are you just gonna imitate her like a child? Like, and that is the thing. That, you know, the, the pandemic's really created a lot of uh, white Rosa Parks. And uh, they just think, oh, this is their civil rights movement. You know, they're gonna have their time because black Americans have gotten everything. We need our movement. It's so sad. And once again, like, dude, do you wanna go outdoors or not? Do you wanna shop normally or not? You wanna wear those glasses backwards on your head or not? Yeah. Put on a mask, your life. Everyone's lives will not just be easier, but safer. There you go. You understand? You know, and this is the same guy who he's like, I'm vaccinated. I bet he's back going like, I don't even know if it works because there's breakthrough vaccination, <laughs> breakthrough cases. So it's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, he Poor was guy. Horrible. Go work on uh, leg day, dude. Yeah, uh, this was a mall. <laughs> this was a, a mall in San Antonio, Texas, the North Star Mall. This was at an Oakley store. Um, as you mentioned, and uh, we have not been able to identify uh, the male Karen as of yet, but stay tuned. We've been pretty successful at doing so. All right, <laughs> we got more on the other side, it's indisputable. You're about to watch some behind the scenes footage of the Young Turks. Ooh. Now these are partial videos, if you wanna get all of them, you become a member, go to tyt.com slash join, and you'll get all the behind the scenes of me, Anna, John, JR, a little bit reality show like tyt.com slash join and enjoy this. You know what you're seeing behind me, Jersey, hold. Watch me flip this camera, however I flip it. Do I flip it like this? No, I just took a picture. I'm bitsing right now. What? Behind the scenes. Oh, okay. okay. Remembers? I don't have yeah. my face on. She, she doesn't have her face on, folks. Oh, that, that's Jared's ass right there. You can't take five minutes off, can you? No, I can't, Johnny Pie. I said it was live stream, but I was lying. It's not a live stream, it's just for members. Bitsy, this is my cat. You know what his name is? Kiki Cat. Animals are innocent. Control room and the insanity is obviously there. Right now, as you can see, I'm directing or tech directing. I'm so happy to be here. This is what like a Labor Day beard looks like for Jenk. Man, you're a Young Turks viewer if you recognize me like this. Oh, thank you. You are the one person in my life I would love to meet. What's going on, guys? This is Bitsy or BTS or behind the scenes with Hassan Piker, AKA Woke Bay. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. I have finished my show, The Damage Report, and now I get into a really awkward time of the day. When I'm sitting, the control room is right there. So I can see Bart, and this is the Pittsburgh office, by the way. I refer to often as the boiler room. You see how it's ripped? Is it super unprofessional to wear that at a business meeting? Or am I like, cool, rebel? I just finished doing the power panel, and I'm fired up. What do you do for TYT? Not a whole lot. If you're frantically tweeting at us that something's broken, thank you because I'm fixing it. And thank you for being a TYT member. Super last thing, because there's always got to be a super last thing. Oh, that was disastrous. This has been Behind the Scenes, Behind the Scenes. 
Welcome to Indisputable. I'm your host, Dr. Rashad Richard. We got a lot happening today. But what do we do on this show? We tell the truth. You know why we tell the truth? Because the truth is simply indisputable. Rashad, great to be here. Congratulations on the new show. And I gotta let everybody know that Rashad and I go way back. Here's the pattern that we see in all of these Karen stories. They think they own stuff they do not own. Now, where does that come from? I don't know, maybe slavery. Maybe they think they should still own black people. This is what happens when Karen's weaponized the police. When you're used to privilege, equality seems like oppression. It hits you in a certain way when someone is holding you against your will, treating you like you're a criminal and you're an innocent person. This is something that black people face no matter where they are. A stronger black economy lends itself to a stronger, greater economy. Don't think it's exclusive of you, it's inclusive of you. What's your beef with critical race theory? It adds more fuel to the fire of the racist tendencies that we already have. We have a generation of problems problem solvers that can remedy the problem if they are properly taught what the problem is. You know who created redlining in this country? Mm -hmm. The white liberal. I, I, don't, I don't give a damn who created it. If it's a racist uh, uh, policy, uh, racist uh, policy, uh, Shelly. Here's what, what I don't know. I don't know. See, there you go filibustering, brother. You're scared of this truth, but you're gonna get it though. Climate is changing fundamentally, extremely, and non-linearly. It's becoming worse now. It's not when the levees burst that is the problem, it's in the anticipation of that. So I hope every human being is safe. And by human beings, I do not include multinational corporations, especially the ones that started climate change in the first place. What we're currently doing right now in cutting emissions is clearly not enough. There will be ramifications to what Trump is doing. I don't want people to suffer, but I feel like there's gonna be a lot of suffering because we have an imbecile as our leader. What's happening? Welcome back. We got a lot of viewer comments. I will read as many as I can, okay? All right, let's get to it. Uh, Mickey C, the silver haired dragon, there you go. Alabama, where his crowd was squashed together, shoulder to shoulder, and not a mask in sight. And literally, 95% of the people had no mask. There were a couple, all right? But it was like finding Waldo. Uh, where COVID cases are up 218%, where the Republican governor announced there are no ICU beds available. Those announcements came days before the rally. A normal human would have canceled the rally after hearing those. Yep, um, Sina Hogaboom, uh, any person of color would have been thrown um, to the floor, pepper sprayed and tased after being handcuffed. I agree, and I thought I was the only one saying this. I'm usually for an officer to deescalate, but I felt in the situation of the male Karen, that whoever responded to that, I don't know if he was security or a cop, looks like he did have a gun. I just felt like they were too nice to the guy. Was it just me? Okay, um, electic miscellaneous says, these Karens act like children. No, that's an insult to children. Well, my seven year old daughter doesn't get what she wants. She angrily leaves the room. If that male <laughs> Karen was as mature as my daughter, he would have just left instead of throwing things and mocking a saleswoman. And just remember, the reason why she started recording is because he already threw her products on the floor, okay? All right, YouTube Super Chat. Omega Shinron Dragon says, the good doctor and my TYT crush, I should play numbers. You should play numbers all week, cuz it's your lucky week, all right? That's how good this Monday is. Brett Williams. Cannot wait for our Wish a Karen Woods t shirt. That shirt will make a Karen's head explode. And listen, if you get this t shirt and it's coming, please get a Karen in the moment of Karenicity recorded while proudly wearing your I Wish a Karen Wood t shirt and send it directly to TYT. We may, <laughs> we may disrupt the space time continuum. <laughs> The space Karen continuum. Yeah, right, I'm there you go. 
I'm so right. torn because I just real briefly, hashtag not all Karens. I have a lovely Karen who uh, listens yeah. to the habituation room and she's so wonderful. She tips the show and she does the best. So I'm like very like partial, like Tina's and Susan's. I just just gotta get it in for my, my girl Karen. Yeah, um, I have a good friend. Her name is Karen. She actually she works for the Black News Channel. Uh-huh. And she happens to be a white female, but she's lovely. She's a wonderful person and has been a good friend of mine for many years. Um, all right. Um, Kelly O'Hara, you know, I got to read a poem of the day. Trump took the shot and says it's good to do. But if you'd rather not, that's your choice too. Maybe he shouldn't talk if the right thing makes him balk. Very nice. <laughs> Bars. Uh, MAGA people, Peter N says MAGA people are the reason there are instructions of shampoo bottles. <laughs> but they won't follow them anyway because freedom. <laughs> um, I always wondered about that whole like, don't iron, don't use the iron while the clothes on your body. Like, really, I got to be warned about that. But evidently, we do. Okay, um, Charles Lange says, Dr. Richie is the sharpest dressed face of honor and integrity. Stick any of you just might learn a thing or two. I like that, Charles. Now, are you trying to compete with uh, my girl here on the poem tip? I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like it. Larry Harris says, in the mail Karen starter kit store, <laughs> laughing my A off. Yeah, that was the mail kit, uh, the mail Karen starter kit store. I agree. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Can't get to all of them, but thank you all for chiming in. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a Virginia man gets 18 months for burning a cross in a black family's lawn. This is now, I'm not talking about the 60s, okay? Ironically, his name is James Brown. Let's put up a picture of James Brown, all right? James Brown, 41 years of age, pleaded guilty in April to criminal interference with federally protected housing rights based on the victim's race, all right? The day before Brown burnt the cross in his neighbor's yard on June 14th of last year, one of the neighbor's family members organized a civil rights protest the day before. That's legal to do, protest is American. According to prosecutors, Brown admitted to burning the cross to two witnesses. He was also known to use racial slurs when referring to his neighbors who are black. When police searched Brown's home, After the incident, get this, they found shirts, staples, a staple gun, and tiki fuel. Yep, tiki fuel. The fuel is believed to have been used as an accelerant. The shirts were similar to shirts used to assemble the cross. The burn barrel and cross were last known to be obtained by the Marion Police Department, which assisted in the investigation, let's put up a pic. Let's put up the picture again of this racist terrorist. Now he has not been charged with terrorism. He is receiving 18 months for burning burning this cross on the family's lawn. Um, we need new laws for these types of crimes, okay? And the penalty needs to be stiffer. According to the prosecutor, they wanted to send a clear message uh, to others about doing things like this. Sorry, Mr. Prosecutor, not clear enough. Not clear enough, 18 months? Nope, not clear enough. What is 18 months? 18 months is routinely a bad misdemeanor, okay? Not enough. Usually on a misdemeanor, you get a year. On real bad misdemeanors, you may get two. He gets 18 months. Francesca, what are your thoughts here? I mean, it's astounding how little that is. Um, for the the hatiest of the hate crimes. You want to look hate crime up in the diction, that's the hate crime, right? It's a literal burning cross, KKK stuff here, obviously. So 18 months is ridiculous, um, you know, but doesn't surprise me. What does surprise me is that this was his neighbor, which is again, and, and look, your show is basically like looking at like, you know, the brink to which so many, especially white Americans, are 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 teetering because you know they've been convinced that somehow their lot in life is not as good as Black Americans. I mean, and 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 you see this. This is someone's neighbor. 
they're not speaking to their neighbor. This is part of someone, a family that part of, is part of their community. And that's just insane to me. Look, I don't talk to my neighbors either. I just quietly judge them through the blinds. But look, <laughs> like everybody else. Like everybody else, like every normal person. But I am not going to threaten them, right? And 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 of obviously not for their race or or ethnicity or religion. So it, you know, I don't know. I don't know at this point. I'm like, I think that given our history, look, there's there's, you know, crimes such like that in a place like Germany, right? After the Holocaust, in the wake of Nazism, are punished with far more than 18 months, right? Because they understand what that means. But this country never really had a reckoning um, with the Jim Crow South, with uh, slavery, right? We've never finished the Reconstruction. If we had, then acts like that would be taken and should be taken, you know, 20 times as seriously. Yeah, yeah. And listen, these individuals are not charged to the fullest extent of the law. Now remember, this guy who's a terrorist in my book, James Brown, that's so unfortunate that's his name. (laughs) He was convicted of interference with federally federally protected housing based on the victim's race, okay? That is the law that they use, that's the statute. However, the man burned a cross. That's arson, Um, you can say felony arson. The man criminally trespassed. The man also um, committed an act of terrorism in my opinion because he was seeking a political goal, all right? Now you can also run the sentencing um, consecutively rather than concurrently to increase the time that the individual spends incarcerated. There are other things you can do if you're really trying to make an example out of people like this is my point. All right, let me shift gears. This really this really makes me upset as a former high school teacher and current college professor, okay? There's a substitute teacher, substitute teacher who goes into a classroom and erases the regular teachers Black Lives Matter sign and writes all lives matter. You the damn substitute. Now obviously you have a level of privilege here and lack of professionalism rarely seen inside of a classroom. So let me give you the background, a white substitute teacher took down a Black Lives Matter sign that was hanging in a classroom and then proceeded to write all lives matter on the whiteboard took down the sign of the regular teacher and then wrote all lives matter on the whiteboard. Despite the fact that the sign was originally placed there by the actual teacher, the regular teacher of that class. A viral video shows the substitute teacher freaking out after a black student erases the board, okay? (laughs) And challenges the nature of why the substitute did what she did. All right, uh, here it is. Here's some of the video. Yeah, uh, we'll just do our best. Okay, ma'am. I'm going to have to send you to the office because that is my whiteboard because I am the teacher today. Okay, hey, okay, can you please take your things and head to the office? Yes, I will. Very much pleasure to know. saying, oh yeah, like, oh, white lives matter. Nothing has happened to them, nothing bad has happened. Nothing bad has happened no, to a white person oh. ever? Okay, we're not talking about that, I'm just saying straight up. Were you a slave? No, who sold who into slavery? Did you know African Americans sold African Americans oh, into slavery? So I'd encourage you to go check with your history teacher and get that all straight out. history right now. So, so you can learn history. And how it truly unfolded. Because that is true history. Okay, if you are going to be in this room, you need to. That's all fine. That is an option. That is completely an option. That was stated at the beginning of class. Thanks. Let me point some things out here. Uh, That substitute teacher was completely wrong for erasing what is a de facto lesson for those students 
because the teacher, the regular teacher, decided to have a Black Lives Matter sign there. That is her classroom. That is not the substitute teacher's classroom. That is a violation, professional violation. Um, when she said, that's my whiteboard, no ma'am. It is not your whiteboard. It does not belong to you. You are the substitute teacher uh, and you're misusing the whiteboard. That's why the student got up and erased the mess you put up there. Uh, and let's talk about how wrong she is about um, who sold who, okay? Now she said African Americans sold African Americans. Okay, that's dumb as hell. I think she meant Africans sold slaves. I think that's what she meant, even though she didn't say that. Um, incorrect again. Now, based on the historical note, you have heard that there were Africans who engaged in the slave trade. Well over 90% of those who were enslaved Africans were raided, were stolen, and also deceived into that marketplace. It was not some great commerce as some would like you to believe. So she's factually, historically inaccurate, but it is a narrative that she likes. And so she decides to promote it. We see it is what it is. Uh, while the teacher in question has not been identified, the original post claims, uh, the original post claims she was removed from the classroom shortly after the incident. Good. All right, Francesca. I I need to see that video of the teacher being right. removed from the class. Um, that is the most nightmare substitute teacher. I feel for those kids. You saw some of the kids going like. Oh. Making big eyes, like where do I look? Where do I look? Where do I look? Having a substitute teacher is already bad enough. You're like, oh, here we go. Um, as Alex, the producer, mentioned, it's usually just putting on a video and just watching a movie. And I was like, obviously, she's gonna make everybody watch Dangerous Minds and be like, see, <laughs> right. see, we we save you, people. You know, like yeah. that's what where we're going. Um, but like. The fragility, once again, just the amount of fragility that it takes to take down a sign, put up another sign, and just spout your sort of, again, kind of like white nationalist propaganda, let's be real. The whole mm -hmm. African sold slaves, you know, is a, is a clear talking point that has yep. been used to basically deny the American slave experience and what we still owe the descendants. Anyway, I'm done. I know we got to wrap. Well said. Uh, dear sister, it's always a pleasure having you on the program. Tell people how they can follow you and check out your show. Oh my gosh, follow me at Franny Fio on all the platforms, uh, on YouTube especially, YouTube slash Franny Fio, and listen to the Bituation Room wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you, sis. I appreciate you. Thank you, doctor. All right, we got more on the other side. Stick and stay. It's indisputable. I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm at a uh, wolf pack gathering. We're growing. I see faces that I recognize, but I also see a lot of faces that I that I don't recognize, and that's that's fantastic. We are all taking time out of our lives to be here, and that's amazing. That means we truly believe in this. Make no mistake, everyone in this room is a leader in wolf pack. Alaska, West Virginia, Montana, Georgia, Massachusetts, New York. Uh, New Jersey, everyone is here. All these folks paid with their own money and sometimes took vacation days to come here uh, to strategize on how to get our democracy back and get money out of politics. Or you get more political power just because you have more money. This is why it requires a constitutional amendment. The process of winning in your state next year doesn't begin when session begins. It begins right now. To work to a goal, something this big that you're actually making a difference of, there's very few things in the world that really compare to that feeling. Equal rights to fair representation, rights for human beings, anti-corruption laws, and free and fair elections. That's what we are fighting for. What were the founding fathers? Revolutionaries. And they built revolution into the document. So Article 5 is the way we have to go. This is how you do it. If you're in this as a team, you're in this together, the fight will always continue. That fight is not between the left and the right. That fight is between basically greed and humanity. So I'm asking you to put differences aside, whether you're conservative or independent or progressive, to join forces to say no more corruption. You get beyond the fear, you take that first step and you'll change the world. What I want to leave you with, of course, is hope. And I want to assure you that if we keep fighting together, we're going to win together. We're going to get that convention, we're going to get that amendment, and we're going to get our democracy back. Come join us, wolf-pack.com. 
sharp increase in healthcare insurance premiums next year in response to the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. The country is desperate for Medicare for all, but the mainstream media will tell you nonstop lies about how people don't want it. Between 5.8 million and 23 million lost their health care just during this pandemic. And Joe Biden says, no, I don't think that's an argument for Medicare for all. How are you going to find $35 trillion? They constantly misstate things, but without explaining that the current system costs at least $50 trillion. Every other developed nation has a single payer system, and they all pay less. In fact, on average, they pay about half of what we pay. It doesn't matter if taxes go up, if your health care costs go way, way down. The for-profit health insurance companies are simply a scam price gouging you, and they're in between you and your doctor. Look, guys, the good news is we're going to win. We're going to get Medicare for all. A famous new author has a book out. His name is Dogen Uger. That's my dad. Okay, the name of the book is called The Original Young Turk, and it's his life story. I read it, trust me, you're gonna love it. He has such a straightforward way of telling stories that you're gonna be amused by it. It's like, well, then I met JFK, then I was at the White House, then I started a business, then I became businessman of the year. <laughs> it's amazing. You're gonna love the stories, and it's part of what made me progressive. Check it out at shoptyt.com. It is wrong to deny any of your fellow Americans the right to vote in this country. Look, I tell you guys, most important thing is voting in primaries. Primaries, primaries, primaries. I hope every American will vote. Will vote for the candidate and party of his choice, but vote. We cannot continue to complain about corruption and complain about what's happening in this country and continue to vote for it. Let's get it right this time. It could be a moment of redemption for what happened in 2016. All right, welcome back. Let me go to some of these comments first. TYT member, the good doctor says, burn a cross in your neighbor's front yard 18 months. Burn a blunt with your neighbors five to 10 years. Just the system is working. Yeah. Mick and see the silver hair dragon says, I guess it was an accident that white men in boats landed on African shores and did so repeatedly. They were just tourists who happened to look out with Africans selling their own. YouTube Super Chat, uh, Feral Dragon says, our death toll would have made the 1917 pandemic look minor if we didn't have all the medical knowledge, the GQP shines. What was the GOP? Okay. Um, 
Sir, smoke it right 74. <laughs> there was a cross burned in my yard and a brick thrown through my window when I was young in the 90s. I thought they were my friends, only got 12 months. Wow. Overflow says, wow, I'm from Texas and I remember that line about Africans selling slaves in my history book. Thank you for giving us the true numbers, Dr. Richie. My absolute pleasure. Sun Dragon says, Africans did enslave other Africans, but after seven years, they were given land and were accepted into that village. Um, some did that as well. And you also had tribal wars and POWs, just like you have with every other nation. And those POWs, some of them uh, became enslaved as well. Uh, this was not something that was simply uh, in Africa, is my point. Okay, POWs are everywhere when there's war and conflict, and someone is captured um, as an enemy combatant. Um, Rainy Day says, uh, they'll let anybody be a teacher, huh? Yeah. Uh, Track 21, reconstruction in this country was shorter than I ever to reconstruct Afghanistan. What does that say about our country? All right, good point. Uh, Angie Pepper says, but we should be worried about CRT, <laughs> right? With substitute teachers like that, but you're worried about CRT. That's not even taught in K through 12 education. All right, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. In the bullpen today, we have Aaron with National Director of Freedom Foundation. Aaron, good day, welcome. Rashad, thanks for having me on, appreciate it. Thanks for being on the program. Listen, I don't wanna presume what you know or believe about mask, mask mandates, or even the COVID-19 vaccine. So give us some of your thoughts and your perspective as it relates to those. I think the first thing that we're seeing right now is the mandates that are go, that are being pushed in schools. I don't believe that kids should be forced to wear masks. I don't think that we should be forcing them to be taught at home or even having half days. I believe that kids should be in school full time. I think that they should be not forced to be wearing masks. If they choose to wear masks, that's absolutely their choice. If the teachers choose to get vaccinated, that's absolutely their choice. But we shouldn't be having these uh, broad mandates that affect a whole population of people. Let me ask you a few questions about that. So first, do you believe school boards, now typically anybody that passes a mask mandate for children, it is a localized school board empowered by the community of voters in that local area. Do you believe that school boards, one, actually have the legal authority to mandate mask for children? Yeah, I believe they do. Yeah, school school board school board should be the ones making these decisions, not uh, not governor's orders. So thank you for saying that. So let me tell you what's happening. <clears throat> school boards are saying we exercising our legal authority. We're saying that children need to have masks. Let me take it to Florida, for example. Right now you have seven school districts in Florida as of this morning that have mandated mask, okay? However, the governor of Florida created an executive order, not a statute, not a law, but an executive mm -hmm. order saying that these school boards cannot do what they are legally authorized to do, even based on your own commentary. So how mm -hmm. does that fly when you have a school board exercising their legal authority? And then a governor banning them from exercising their legal authority. What say you to that? Rashad, this is probably one of the few issues we agree on. I think that all the executive orders coming out of any governor's office is completely wrong. It should be left to local school districts to make the decisions about what's best for their communities and their kids. I think that mandating masks coming from governor's offices is completely wrong. If schools if school districts want to do it, that's their prerogative. They have the rights and the ability to go and do it. And, and I don't believe in it personally. I don't think that kids should be forced to wear masks, but they absolutely have the authority to. I just don't think they should. This is really interesting because I, I dare say this, man. Your premise has significant intellectual integrity because you're saying you are. Why do you sound surprised when you say that? <laughs> because I have debated some folks on that other side, brother. <clears throat> Their intellectual integrity was out the door in the first one minute, okay? So right now yours is still intact. We'll see if that upholds throughout the entire debate. Um, so you're saying that yes, school boards do have the legal authority, which you're correct, they do. But you oppose it and I assume you oppose it based on you know, probably a, a very practical reason, maybe even a, an ethical reason as it relates to kids. But the issue is, and this has been an issue throughout 
uh, various Republican controlled states. The issue is these Republican governors are not simply allowing the local school board to make these decisions. Yeah, Rashad, as I mentioned, I think it's wrong that governors should have sweeping orders, but it works on the other side too. I live in yep. liberal state, Washington state, and the West Coast has gone completely the opposite direction. We were framing teachers and nurses as heroes. You know, it's been both from the left and the right, we framed teachers and nurses as heroes for working through the pandemic. But now you have governors like Inslee in Washington state and throughout the West Coast that are going to fire nurses and teachers for not taking a vaccine, for making their own independent healthcare decisions. And Rashad, you know, these nurses know more than both me and you do do about COVID. They've been in the nurses, they've been in the hospitals every single day fighting through this. They should, they know more than the governors do. They should be allowed to go and make their own healthcare decisions without the possibility of being fired. As it stands right now in Washington state, we're gonna fire tens of thousands of nurses and teachers for not do, uh, having a vaccine. Let me remind you of something because we're acting as if mandates for vaccinations are something new. As it stands now, every public high school and over 90% of private institutions require vaccinations, okay? They require them as a mandate for attendance. Those vaccinations include polio, tetanus, chicken pox, and a few other things, okay? That's common. <clears throat> if you're saying that mandates of the vaccination should be um, opposed based on some legal or ethical principle, why do you not oppose the current vaccination mandates that are already present? This isn't polio, Rashad. You know, this isn't. This doesn't have the spreadability of the chickenpox, or it doesn't have the uh, immortality of, of polio. We're talking about COVID, and let me tell you, at the start of the pandemic, we didn't know what this was going to be doing. We didn't know how it was going to affect kids. We didn't know uh, how widely spread and how deathly it was going to be. We've been in it for over 18 months now. We now know how. Um, how bad, how bad this can possibly get for people. And we found in kids especially, the, the mortality rate is significant. In fact, more kids died in 2019 of the flu than they did of COVID in 2020. Let's not downplay the death of any kid as, as anything less than a tragedy. But we have to come to a point in society where we weigh up what is the value of education, because these mm -hmm. kids aren't getting educated versus the potential risks of COVID. Okay, so Aaron, you're incorrect on the on the numbers as it relates uh, to the conclusiveness of COVID. <clears throat> Every medical scientist will tell you today, they cannot conclude how dangerous COVID will be because not only of the Delta variant, but other variants that coexist right now. We do know that the Delta variant is the primary variant where 95% of all new cases are connected to the Delta variant. That Delta variant is different than the original COVID design that we are accustomed to. That Delta variant is more spreadable and that Delta variant does impact children at a rate much more significant than the original COVID-19 virus. Let me take it to Alabama, for example. In Alabama, just this week alone, they have already hospitalized 50 children. States have gone uh, months without any children hospitalizations until the variant came. And now you're getting 50 to up to 200 in one week of uh, children being hospitalized when that was not the case um, under the original COVID-19 before the variant came. And let me also remind people of the severity of COVID-19. When you look at the flu, because a lot of people like to compare COVID to the flu, uh, not comparable. Uh, the flu impacts um, about zero. 0.1% of the American population as far as death is concerned, okay? However, coronavirus has a death rate of one to 3% depending on that region. That is a significant number. And given the peak season of the flu, you have roughly 700 plus deaths during the peak season of one week of the flu, but 15,000, 25,000 deaths during the peak season of deaths for one week of COVID-19. The numbers, brother, are not comparable here as far as the carnage it creates in this country and beyond. 
Yeah, but we, we the vaccine, we've spoken about the vaccine. From everything that I've read on, on all sides of, of the media, the vaccine is doing an effective job of keeping people um, out of hospitals and it's keeping the uh, stopping them from dying. So can, can we agree on that? Yes. Okay, so- It's, it's more effective have, than not having it, correct. Okay, yeah, so if we have the ability to go and get the vaccine and we as a people see the information out there and go make our own individual decisions. Right. People should be jumping on trains everywhere to go and get the vaccine, right? They should be able, going and making their, their own decisions about what it is. But we were talking about kids in schools and what's happening. Like I said, let's not downplay the death or the hospitalizations of any child as anything less than a tragedy, right? But we as, as a society, our education is failing them from top to bottom. We know who, which kids are being affected by COVID. It's the ones primarily with underlying health conditions. It's the one that there are more, there are kids out there that are more susceptible to COVID. This should be, the left and the right should unanimously, unanimously be getting together and supporting school choice for all children now. Because if you have these kids that can't go into school because they have these underlying health conditions, we shouldn't be forcing them to. We should be giving them homeschool options. We should be giving them limited class size school options, but we're not doing that. We're, we have these blanket statements and orders coming out of primarily liberal governor's offices that affect the, the broad scope of our, of our kids. And it's yeah. all supported by the teachers unions. Okay, so let me, let me bring some things to your attention. Um, the US military, uh, that's a particular profession. You are mandated to receive certain vaccinations. Some people have to get up to 20, 20 plus vaccinations depending on their deployment. This has always been a reality. These things are mandated because you serve in a particular profession. Nurses also, they have to receive a certain number of vaccinations depending, sometimes even depending on their assignment, even if they work overseas or domestically. School teachers. Um, they are mandated to take or have records of the same vaccinations as mandated for the children to have. So let me get this right. Teachers are already are mandated to be vaccinated. Nurses are already mandated to be vaccinated. Military officials are already mandated to be vaccinated. And if they do not obtain those vaccinations, they will be fired from their job. That is absolutely nothing new. So why is it new now that the potential of individuals, especially those who work in healthcare, uh, getting vaccinated or not getting vaccinated. Why is that an issue now when the vaccination mandate has already been a protocol established for decades in that profession? I answered this, this isn't polio and this doesn't have the spreadability of chicken pox. We know what COVID does, we know who it affects and we know the people that are more- How do you know that it? when the scientists are saying they still don't know it because this thing is mutating at lightning speed and now you have not only, what, yeah, multiple variants by the way. You have a primary variant known as the Delta variant or DeSantis variant and it could be <laughs> another variant, all right? So you can't say conclusively, we already know to the extent that this virus will become or will be, we don't. We do, we know that the death rates amongst the kids. Scientists we, know, say no. we, know, we know that younger people with no underlying health conditions are not susceptible to, to dying or hospitalizations because of COVID. We know Let that. Let me address My wife that. Is, here's, no, no, here's the issue, here's the issue. Yep. Our kids are not being educated, that's the problem. My wife is a public school teacher who hasn't seen a kid full time in school since April 2020. We as a society have to start educating our kids again. We have okay. to get them back. And listen, I agree with you on that educated. point. So, so let me give you let me give you some ideas and and some guidance on that. Okay, um, a mask is a protocol. Socially distancing is a protocol. It's a protocol for safety. All right. It's a protocol for in person learning. When you don't do these things, and children start getting hospitalized and they start having severe respiratory problems, and the virus continues to spread. Their parents have to take off from work. Their parents get COVID 19. Their parents go to work and give those individuals the COVID 19 variant, even though they have the vaccination. You see how it's all connected. All of this is connected. Now, the, the reality is that if you are a school teacher, brother, I was a high school teacher, I'm currently a college professor. Any teacher Thank can you. teach a young person with a mask on. That mask won't stop this education from happening. As a matter of fact, I know how to incorporate it into the lesson and curriculum that I am distributing to my young person in front of me. So a mask to a real teacher isn't anything. That is not a barrier to true education. Let me also remind people, we keep talking about 
they have, these young people have underlying health conditions. Well, number one, not all of them. It doesn't pan, the science doesn't pan out. Uh, many of them do, but not all of them. That's number one. Number two, it doesn't damn matter. It doesn't matter if a young person is walking around with some pre existing condition that they may or may not know about. None of that matters. They are still children inside of the school system and they deserve our protection, just as anyone else who does not have a pre existing condition. We don't know everyone who has a pre existing condition. They don't even know many times that they have some condition that may compromise because of COVID 19. So when we start playing this us and them game, with those who have pre-existing conditions, we almost act as if we should sacrifice them for the sake of those who would never catch COVID. And I say no, that is not how we work things in this country, at least not how we should work it. Because those with underlying conditions, brother, they are still part of our overall group of young people. So it doesn't yeah. matter. No, they are, we should absolutely be taking care of them. And you, you reiterated my own point is that we should have school choice for kids that, that are more susceptible to going out and getting COVID. So what if but we they don't hinder, know? We can't, hinder, we can't hinder the education of millions of students that, that based on- Thank you, thank you. We shouldn't be able to go and hinder these. And you, you talk about creating two sides of society, those that have underlying health conditions uh, and those that don't. That's exactly what we're doing with vaccines. But that's not, listen to me, brother. When you decide to ignore the protocols, and this is already happening, that's why seven school districts are in opposition to a law. They are willing to lose their own funding and their paycheck because the governor of Florida has said that he would take the money away. They have made a decision to stand adversarial to the executive order in that state. You have school systems, Clayton County in Georgia and others around the country, they're already closing up again. You know why they're closing up? Because of the spread of the COVID variant. If you do not practice your protocol, then you actually work against the goal that you're saying on my show. Because if you're saying the goal is to return to in-person education and to make sure that in-person education is the cornerstone for, for um, American education, then Ignoring the protocols shuts the school down. Ignoring the protocols gives your increased COVID-19 cases. Ignoring the protocols causes parents to take off from work. Listening to the protocols based on all scientific research decreases the spread of COVID-19 between 40 to 60%. Brother, that's something. All right, I don't agree with everything you said, but let's just assume that everything that you said is correct. Okay. Why can Obama have a birthday party with hundreds of guests, or I can go to a football game today with no mask, with thousands of people in the crowds, but our kids can't wear, can't take their masks off in schools? If Let this thing is question. so, if this no, if this thing is so deadly, if this thing is so deadly, then why are people making these decisions? They shouldn't be right. But this it isn't answer. that bad. Go ahead. Let me answer that question. We're running out of time, but I want to answer that question because I think it's a fair question. But the reason why you can do things that your children cannot do is because you're grown and they're children. The reason oh, why parents can make, you can parents wear, can make the decisions hold on, for their brother, kids. Come on, Rashad. That's brother, a listen to me. Listen to my full answer here. There are dress codes in school systems that you don't have to follow as a parent, but your your school children do. Those dress codes are there for them, not for you. And it doesn't matter if you disagree with the dress code. If the skirt is too short, that's a no-no inside of the school system, okay? If the t-shirt is vulgar, that's a no-no inside of the school system. You can wear that clothing, you can wear that clothing all day. But there are different rules for our children in order to protect them and keep them safe. We have always established that in the United States of America. And all of a sudden we want to abandon that, that centuries long ideology that says we do things in this country as adults for children to protect them that we ourselves may engage in differently. We can smoke, we can drink alcohol, all that's legal for grown people to do. That's not legal for children to do. So if you're telling me that children should be able to do everything that adults can do, have some intellectual integrity all the way through and say they can do whatever adults can do. Rashad, come on, I'm not gonna say, it's like saying that a kid should be forced to, to go and drink alcohol. But parents make independent decisions for their own Do you own think a child, kids. if they wanted to drink alcohol, they should? No, Okay. No, I'm not saying- And you I'm do not think saying. there should be laws against it, correct? 
Yes, yeah. We're talking about alcohol abuse, absolutely. Because why are there laws against children drinking alcohol? Why? Because we have a proven science that says that 12 year olds that start drinking alcohol can can go on and have future problems and their minds aren't- And we have a proven damn science that if you wear a mask, more people live. No, we don't, not amongst kids. We've, this is the- We know, that we've listen had. brother, mask mandates decrease COVID. We know that, that's the science, that's the science. What are you gonna wait for? You're gonna wait for this variant? To start actually killing children all across the country, then change your mind. Wait, it's already we've been, hospitalizing we've been children. Over 18 listen, months. These kids brother, haven't been in school for 18 months. There has brother, to be a point in society. I, listen, that's why I say follow the around. protocol. But you realize children are being hospitalized at a record rate. Alabama doesn't even have any ICU beds anymore. You have so many children being hospitalized. Come on, man. We have, a, we have to get to a point in society where we weigh up the potential risks of COVID. Versus the the uh, what our education needs to be. That's what we need to start doing. School choice is one of the ways that we can go and do that. We need to allow kids to go and make their own. Listen, if you're a parent in Florida right now and your kid is not allowed to wear a mask in school, which actually they are allowed, but everyone isn't being forced to be, and you aren't comfortable with that, you should be able to go and off to another school or homeschool your kids or or do whatever you want. Equally in Washington State, where they're being forced to wear masks, you should be able to take your kid out of that school if you don't want them to. And go and take them into a school that does allow them to go and do that. All right, do you wear a seatbelt? Yeah, I wear a seatbelt. You agree with seatbelt laws? I <laughs> I agree that people should be allowed to go make their own independent decisions. I believe that parents agree, should go. Do you agree with seatbelt laws? No. Okay. I don't. Just I know, so you I, understand. I, I, but I but I follow them and I agree with them because they were passed by a legislative process. Okay, school board is a legislative body. Mm -hmm. uh, we, did, we didn't argue, I, I agreed with you when I said that school boards are allowed to make these decisions. Okay. I just don't think they're the right ones. So let's look at the logic of you wearing a seatbelt. Before seatbelt mandates were in place, people could voluntarily wear a seatbelt or not, okay? You know how many people wore seatbelts? About 30% of the population. You know a lot of people died because they did not wear a seatbelt. In 1981, it was still legal to drink and drive. You did not have DUI laws on the books before 1981. You know what happened once they put DUI laws on the books? Less people started driving drunk, less people died. The death rate decreased, okay? So, and Michelle, I'm talking don't, about per, don't compare wearing a seatbelt to drink driving. That, that's completely- Listen, brother, I'm, that's I'm BS, telling you, you know that. I'm, I'm comparing how mandates actually work in societal constructs. Mandate Drink driving is different than wearing a seatbelt. People so made their own independent is, decisions to just go listen wear a seatbelt. to me, brother. It is a legal mandate to wear a seatbelt. It's a legal mandate to wear a seatbelt because of the safety. The safety is so outweighed by your uh, from your independent decision. Like you may not want to wear a seatbelt, but seatbelts save lives, and so we weigh that and we say, okay. The fact that you could survive an accident with a greater chance, a greater rate of survival success. We're gonna mandate that you wear a seatbelt. You're okay with that mandate in your adult life. Why would you not give children that same opportunity with a mask? With a mask a mandate in that system until we get this thing under control, brother. A seatbelt is not the same as wearing a mask. <sighs> You're putting something over your face. And also, where does You're it You're putting stop? something over well, your body. Rashad, Rashad. Rashad, it's safer that kids stay at home all day, right? And get taught, taught uh, from uh, from a computer screen. That's safer, right? Are we gonna mandate that? It's ridiculous. Brother, we have to get to a point have where we weigh up these options. No, listen, no, come on, man, I, let, I Aaron, let you speak, I let you speak. Aaron, I, I got let one minute. Let, I just wanna say you can have in-class instruction and mask and learning. All of that can happen at the same time. My point is where does it stop? My point is where does it stop? Well, Are we you gonna get mandate what about is get taught at home for another year? Yeah, uh, as long as it takes until we get control of this thing. Brother, it has been fun. My producers are telling me to wrap it up. Uh, Aaron, I'm glad to have you on the show, man. Thank you for coming on the bullpen. Thanks, Sean, appreciate it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just remember, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and take care of the planet. And remember, the truth is always indisputable. <laughs>